Discrimination, marginalization and inequalities is as old as man and in Uganda dates back to pre-colonial and colonial times. The NRM-led government, like many other responsible states, sought to remedy this in its 10-point program when it swept into power in 1986. Today, the people's aspirations for equal opportunities is reflected in the 1995 Constitution of the Republic of Uganda, which was as a result of a consultative process to address all the ills in the society. It ultimately led to the establishment of a body to regulate compliance to equal opportunities for all using the enacted supreme laws of the land that enforce universal values of rights and freedoms. Article 32, subsection 3 of the 1995 Constitution of the Republic of Uganda, as amended, states that Parliament shall make relevant laws, including laws for the establishment of an Equal Opportunities Commission, EOC, for the purpose of giving full effect to Article 32. Consequently, the EOC established by an Act of Parliament on the 8th of July 2010 pursues government policy to promote equal opportunities and ensure a fair and balanced society. Now in its 10th year, the EOC, guided by approved legal and policy frameworks, has published its 7th annual report whose theme is Inclusion and Equitable Access to Service Delivery for Enhanced National Development. The report is intended to progressively show the trends in advancing equal opportunities in Uganda and also assess the extent to which the previous recommendations are being implemented. The report focuses on five thematic areas. These are information, communication and technology, education, health, agriculture and access to justice. Whereas the report acknowledges tremendous achievements in the sectors, it also cites some imbalances and inequalities which might water down the gains made if not addressed. For instance, the report appreciates the efforts undertaken by government to increase accessibility and utilization of ICT among the vulnerable groups. Through the various legal and policy framework, a total of 315 radios and 46 televisions have been given licenses to increase the flow of information which ultimately transforms the economy and people's livelihood. To date, a total of 77% of Ugandans have access to listenership of radios, among which 85% are male and 71% are female. Radio, na, na ba la pali na abatono tono. Inzi, pali da radio satu ano. Pali da radio ya UBC. Iru ano kitono. Whereas there is access to radios, the access to television among the vulnerable groups in rural areas is still low, which limits participation of the marginalized groups in the various government programs. The Sirina TV, the Chaluchu Nachuengo, the Chaluchu TV. No better of Bunkank, a city get ditch, the walls, take a ditch again, damn mass, so stay get the cat living a view of being devoted to nature to manufacturino, to the movie or to the music is a tenga government here, but day to Yamba. Net to call it a cock charmer, Sanyalazi, and to Funama Sanyalazi. A simus of any sober of a ranga woo, or also sober of Funaka TV. No Rabanga Kokuma would it be in Uganda. Ownership of mobile phones stands at 69.8% among the vulnerable groups with a higher proportion amongst the males compared to the females. My name is Rural women use mobile phones and inbuilt radios to access information while others are utilizing ICT to boost their economic opportunities through mobile money businesses to obtain income. Nkola mobile money Airtel na MTN. Na e oroku banti sente zali teziva yo bulungi ni solo. Profit 
as a way of increasing the level of access to and utilization of ICT, government has constructed public ICT hubs and established data centers across the country to benefit the vulnerable people. NBI, you know, when it is here, we shall have internet, we shall, have, we shall be able to access all e-government services, in addition to my UG, the wireless internet for, for the public, anyone can access those government services and wireless as long as they are within range. According to the UCC report of 2017-2018, internet usage was at 19 million and more are yet to benefit through increased network coverage. Without reliable, affordable and access to ICT infrastructure in the different parts of the country, most rural areas and vulnerable groups are left out from development programs. There are some two town councils without internet, without power, so there is nothing. Internet, one way to get is in your MTN and Airtel. And the nga chandi bade cha cha benyo kwesa internet nga AMTN era na Airtel kubanga zuzi sanga nga za waguru nyo bwando zezo kwesa ku Africero oba omkuto omulala tichisoboka kubane twa kai nyente tuba de na era na kati teliu kati erosi galanga otekwa kusange je mkuto je be ye bi jo kajoka okuba toina okulonda okulala nga jo ino kozesa In the education sector, the report appreciates government efforts in making education accessible to all learners with disability. Cited initiatives in the sector include construction of disability-friendly classrooms, disbursement of subvention grants to special schools, procurement of learning materials for learners with disabilities, among others. These interventions have increased enrollment at all levels. Although there are efforts made, allocation of funds to special needs education is still a challenge. Actually, that one is an area where we have not had, uh, though we have it as an indicator in our PBS under education, but it's an area which is not receiving the, the budget. Uh, even if it received a budget, it is just a line. So you find that these children are included in the mainstream education. As a way of increasing accessibility to education for learners with disabilities, government has established schools that are within reach at less than three kilometers in urban areas, as compared to rural areas where learners move distances longer than five kilometers to neighboring districts, and yet they have mobility challenges. This district being in hilly areas, you find up the hill there is a child who is blind, down the hill there's a school mm -hmm. and this child needs to walk from up the, up the hill every day to attend classes mm -hmm. down the hill. Yes. And if such child is blind, mm -hmm. you find it is complete, complete and also difficult for such child to make, to make it every day. The provision of school learning materials in defined schools for special needs was observed to be inadequate compared to the number of learners in those schools. For instance, while ICT is a compulsory subject in secondary schools, there were few or no computers in most of the schools visited. To increase the progression rate for learners with disabilities, government through the Department of Special Needs in Chambogo University has trained a number of teachers to support learners with disabilities in the different schools across the country. 
However, in more than 52% of the sampled schools by the Commission, there were hardly any teachers trained in SNE, despite the fact that they had SNE learners in those schools. We are nine teachers in the district. Those who trained in uh, special needs, there are some three who have got a degree in special needs. The rest have got a diploma. The limited access to learning materials and inadequate access to SNE teachers hinders the progression rate of learners with disabilities and increases cases of school dropouts, which create inequalities at sub-regional level. Under the health sector, health facilities have been provided to the population up to parish level. Government has upgraded 229 health centers to Health Center 3s in a bid to have a healthy productive population that effectively contributes to the sustainable economy. This in a way has reduced the distance traveled to access health services, giving chance to the poor to attain good standards of health. The Health Center 3s offer more advanced sexual reproductive services compared to Health Center 2s which mainly handle basic illnesses. The services are generally free of charge, which promotes access to the services by all, especially the vulnerable and marginalized groups. We have family planning. It's the main major activity that is being offered in all facilities, despite the level. I don't know but so much. I tell you, but Kebera, but Kebera, and what is the disease? But Kebera cancer. However, there are still health challenges being faced by the country, most of which relate to gender and equity, that is maternal mortality, drug stockouts, low staffing, lack of equipment, lack of housing for health workers, among others, is likely to water down the achievements. Tusigalangatukwe <laughs> Kakati eno yodi yafe, mwe tutaika abalwadda abebitanda. Mwe mugenda abachala, mwe mugenda abami na abana. Odi yafe ntono tetumala tutukane kubanga abalwadda ambazinga betage kitanda nenga tutuina we tubateka. The government has defined the agriculture sector to remain central to Uganda's poverty reduction strategy and economic growth employing about 65% of the total labor force and contributes 24.7% of the gross national product, GNP. In the recent past, government has come up with numerous interventions aimed at productivity and incomes of the persons employed in the agriculture sector. New markets have been constructed to enable vulnerable people who are mainly producers of foodstuffs, access markets, distribution of seedlings, training in post-harvest handling method, increasing access to financial credit. So here, in the green value chain, we introduced the triple bags. But the triple bag works very well for the domestic the, the, the for food security and uh, how it works is mainly uh, denying the insects because the insects uh, that, that incur that infest the grain are normally picked from the field so it denies that insect the, the air and in so doing 
the, the, the insects will not survive. We popularize this and we continue we continue to use uh, our farmers to adopt and the triple bag can store grain up to even a year without uh, without any damage if properly used. However, there are still a number of factors hindering vulnerable farmers from enjoying their sweat from agriculture, such as poor road networks, existence of intermediaries and brokers in markets, limited startup capital, lack of collateral security to access credit, and participation in certain stages of production in agriculture continue to undermine women's development in the agricultural sector. Government of Uganda has provided a conducive environment with legal and policy framework that provide for access to justice among the vulnerable. There are a number of both government and private institutions that offer access to justice among the vulnerable. These include police, courts of law, local councils, prisons, probation and juvenile justice centers, Uganda Law Society Legal Aid Clinic, Human Rights Commission and the Equal Opportunities Commission, among others. Uh, we, ha we had a meeting with People of Justice Centre some time back. They advised us people who are vulnerable, who have suits in these particular courts, how they can be helped. Kayunga Office of DPP, it has only one station, but we have three courts. We have the main one, which is supposed to be a chief magistrate's court. Then we have two sub-courts, one of Bale, grade two, and one of Kangulumira, grade two court. During our work, we interact with different persons. But unfortunately, people who find their way to offices are very few due to ignorance, poverty. But because of ignorance, it affects so much when it comes to hearing cases. They're intimidated from the ground. Although there are a number of interventions established by government to increase access to justice, there are a number of existing challenges which limit the marginalized groups from accessing justice. Mm. If you look at uh, Rukunjiri as a district, yes. Rukunjiri is, uh, is a big district mm. and uh, its uh, geographical setup mm. is, uh, I think, about 40% of the district is hilly. Yes. And this kind of, of, of terrain, mm. which is really bad, that uh, accessibility mm. to a police station is very difficult. Mm. You will find that a person moves for over five kilometers mm -hmm. to access a police station. You take a point, uh, a, a sub-county like Nyakshen, mm -hmm. the distance between a police station and the last person on the border with Kanung, mm -hmm. a person will move even for 10 kilometers mm -hmm. and not on good terrain. Mm -hmm. So already that is very hard for a pers a, an elderly person mm -hmm. to access Justice. In Nagarabatu Yamba, Mammy and Bamagama Kakati into Wamagaroku Gurao Fido, Mugende Mosasuli sent a police here, Kayunga, ran it to Sasura Nifai, the city in Zidina, Nitsasura Wano Sente, Nitu Gurao Musango, Nitufuna Loya, Katio Mammy or Yona to Gamba, Muritemi to Aro Kumi Kumi, Twadia Banto Mokaga, and Soroku Gurao Fido Zam. Near Twagurao, Twawa Bomsango Mesgua Mokaga. The Equal Opportunities Commission has identified gaps and made recommendations to relevant government stakeholders for implementation. If these recommendations are implemented, Vision 2040 will be a reality in the eyes of all Ugandans.